Hello, everyone. Okay, let me share the screen first. Okay, so, so let me continue uh, to discuss uh, thermodynamics. In particular, we are interested in the calculation of the uh, number density and energy density and pressure. So this is the uh, what we have already defined, the energy density, uh, which is given by this expression. And this is the uh, this is the integral uh, weighted by energy, and F is the uh, phase space distribution. And because the energy and phase space distribution those are function of energy, is which is a function of momentum square, so we can uh, freely integrate uh, over the solid angle, which gives you four pi. So for, for pi and the integral for the momentum, and just to replace it on uh, this, uh, the QP pi by this, then uh, you need to take, uh, make a integration for the momentum. And uh, this is the uh, result uh, before any uh, approximation. So we need to do this integral uh, for momentum between zero and infinity. And if you make a change of variable from momentum to energy, then you can just to use, make the differentiation from both sides in this equation and to get this result. It's the moment infinitesimal energy is related to the infinitesimal momentum by this relation. And just you can replace the infinitesimal momentum by this equation. And then the range of the integration becomes uh, from uh, mass m and infinity, because the momentum starts from zero, but the energy starts from rest mass. So then uh, this line is just to, you are replacing the infinitesimal momentum by infinitesimal energy. And so as a con uh, result, you have E square from the numerator, and we have a one momentum, which is replaced by this uh, function, as a fun by a function of energy. So this is the uh, result. Uh, this is the as in the form of the energy integral. And then we can do the same thing for the number density. And the number density just to integrate over, uh, integrate the uh, phase space distribution. And again, this, uh, uh, we are already uh, uh, take into, took into account the solid angle integration here. And just the difference as compared to the energy density, uh, we have uh, E instead of E square because there is no uh, energy weighted uh, in this integration. So, and then also similarly, uh, the pressure just to uh, weighted integral with the P scale over three uh, E. And then uh, you can notice that uh, the momentum dependent part has uh, three over half power due to the momentum uh, square. Uh, and also uh, we don't have uh, energy uh, explicitly, uh, which is canceled by this E, and then we have one thought in front of it. So <clears throat> this is the uh, result for the energy density and number density and pressure without any approximation. So then we can uh, 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 we can take a certain approximation first, uh, relativistic limit, and also 
the chemical potential can be ignored. Relative steel limit, we can ignore the rest mass. So if, if you go back to the energy density, uh, just to this lower end uh, in the in integration, M can be ignored and also mass in this uh, numerator can be ignored. So we have then uh, E cube and uh, the exponential plus minus one. And here at the region that I'm dividing T cube is to uh, make a change of variable from energy to small t. And then uh, the integral uh, contains this overall uh, energy density contains this is the force power uh, in front of it. And the integral is independent of temperature in this form. And so for minus sign in the denominator uh, for the both uh, uh, Einstein, sorry, this is not S, for Einstein statistics, half in, or for integer spin, uh, this integral can be written in this, uh, uh, the Riemann zeta function. So gamma function times Riemann zeta function. So gamma function is just a three factorial, and this is the Riemann zeta function of four. And the on the other end, for Fermi Dirac statistics, we have plus sign in the uh, denominator. And in this case, uh, this is related to, um, related to the eta function. So this is the eta function, so oscillating series. Uh, and this is related to the Riemann zeta function with this coefficient, one minus uh, e to the minus three. So the free factor uh, becomes seven over eight that makes a change between Bose-Einstein and Fermi Dirac statistics. And the Riemann zeta function of four is given by y to the fourth divided by 890. So then you, if you uh, uh, summarize, then the, we have a t to the fourth power uh, for the energy density times some uh, numbers, numerical numbers. And then the only difference between this Bose-Einstein and fermi dirac statistics is this free factor, seven over eight. And now we are going to discuss that the uh, the Bosch, in the case of Bosch uh, Einstein, the degree of freedom is the same as the number of degrees, effective kind of effective degree of degrees of freedom is the same as uh, number of degrees of freedom. On the other hand, uh, in the case of fermion, the effective degree of freedom effective and the effective massless degrees, degrees of freedom is given by uh, this formula. Seven of eight times G. So this is the kind of, uh, uh, this is the effective massless degree of freedom. And this is the number of degrees of freedom. So uh, then let me continue to discuss the number density, uh, which is also given by uh, this integral and the limit of uh, negligible mass. Then it, instead of e to the e cube, we have a e square in the numerator. So then integral becomes similar uh, as before, but uh, we have t to the t square instead of t cube and the free factor is proportional to the t cube instead of t to the fourth. So this integral uh, again for Bose Einstein uh, statistics, this becomes uh, a Riemann zeta function two factorial times Riemann zeta function three zeta three. And for Fermi Dirac statistics, we have this free factor due to this eta function oscillating series, uh, series. and uh, in it is uh, the eta function is related to Riemann zeta function in this form, 
And then the only difference between these two cases is the this numerical factor three over four, uh, three quarters. So, so in summary, the, num the number density uh, can be this written in this form, and and then uh, so here there is a difference between these two uh, cases by uh, three quarter. So from the statistics, is three quarter. So and also this numerically. Uh, even the top function of three is not given by in, is not given in a closed form. But so we know the numerical uh, value for the man zeta function of three, which is the one point two zero two zero three. Like that. So the finally the for the relativistic case, the pressure is also uh, approximated. Uh, in this form, when the mass term is ignored, so the general expression for the pressure is given by this, and we are ignoring this mass term. Then we have uh, it, uh, e e cube in the uh, numerator, and we have uh, one sixes in the free factor. So that will be the, uh, the just nothing but one third the energy density. So because of that, the pressure is given by one third uh, times uh, energy density. The equation of state, this is the nothing but the equation of state, W equal to uh, one third for radiation. So now we are going to consider the case for non-relativistic uh, limit. So non-relativistic limit, uh, the mass term I mean, the temperature is smaller than the mass term. So as you will see that there is a Boltzmann suppression uh, in the number density. So uh, in this case, also the energy can be approximated to this form, the mass times the kinetic energy. So first the number density, uh, uh, you can see uh, if you go back to the formula, the general formula the, for the number density here, this form. So then uh, instead of using uh, the energy integral, we are going to use this momentum integration. So because the, it is, looks simpler because of the, because the range of integral, integration is between zero to infinity, momentum scale. TP times phase space distribution. So this is the, then uh, for non for non relativistic limit, the phase space to distribution uh, given by this expression plus minus, and here the the energy uh, is uh, much larger than temperature. So, so rest mass uh, is larger than temperature. So as a consequence, energy uh, is much larger than temperature. So this uh, static uh, uh, phase space distribution can be approximated to the one for Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. So this is a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. So with that uh, approximation, uh, you can rewrite the energy density. So this is approximation. Because the, the other, the previous cases for relativistic limit, uh, we uh, implicitly assume that there's a population. In the phase space distribution, given by this, right? And this energy, uh, we are replacing by rest mass plus momentum scale divided by 2m. So, uh, sorry. So g is q over 2 pi, and we have a free factor, uh, which is the rest mass minus, so 
momentum independent part and zero to infinity and momentum scale dp e to the minus p scale to mt so we have uh, some this is the uh, free factor which depends on temperature and of course there's another temperature there's the temperature still there's a temperature dependence in the integral so let me just uh, simplify this integral further such that integral does not depend on temperature so change of variable here so so this p square over 2 mt can be change it to t square. So then uh, we need to what, uh, divide by mt, 2 mt. And here, the infinitesimal momentum, we need to divide by 2 mt square root of t mt and multiply by 2 mt 3 half to the 3 half. Then, uh, this, then this integral becomes independent. Uh, it looks independent of temperature. So t scale to the minus t scale dt. And this, uh, so this form of the integral is nothing but uh, one half gamma function, three half. So the definition of the gamma function for general argument, we have you can write down in this form 2g minus e t to the 2g minus 1 times e to the t square dt. So this is the definition of the gamma function in the integral form. So uh, therefore, and then this uh, and again also this uh, uh, and then the gamma function of three half is given by one half times of gamma function of one half and the one half gamma function of one half is nothing but the square root of pi so then uh, number density finally uh, written in this form uh, in terms of temperature. So here, square root of pi over 4. Therefore, uh, if you uh, make this big, uh, sorry, this uh, is not g scale, sorry, this is the just g. Just, this is the uh, number of uh, degrees, degrees of freedom g. So then this g times and uh, you also note, can notice that this and these two factors combine to uh, written uh, down uh, written down here. Um, and so this is one square root of pi. Therefore, uh, sorry, let me see if uh, there's the pi square. Sorry, there's some I missed here. Two pi square, two pi square. Oops, two pi square. So two pi square. That is the uh. Uh, this is four uh, pi. Therefore, this is the mt over pi to the three half. So, uh, mt over two pi to the three half and exponential uh, factor. So, so we. We have uh, found that this is non relativistic, and we have some uh, Boltzmann suppression because the mass is much greater than temperature. So we have a large ex ex value in the exponent. 
So this is the call. This is Portman. This is Portman suppression. So number density uh, is reduced if temperature is uh, smaller than the mass of particle. And then what about energy density and pressure? So you can also use the similar expression for the energy density uh, in, the, in the form of the momentum integral. So if you go back to the form of the uh, energy density in this, uh, it's an energy, it's a, uh, as a momentum integral. Uh, so we have already, okay, so here. So this is the, this one, it's the form of the uh, momentum integral. And so uh, then we have a P scale and DP and the energy divided by, uh, well, let me just don't divide energy times phase space distribution. And the phase space distribution we have already approximated to the Maxwell, the form of the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution by this exponential, right? And then also the energy is approximated to mass plus kinetic energy. So, then this uh, can be approximated uh, in this form. Of course, this energy appearing in the exponent also approximated. So m plus p scale of two m and e to the m plus p scale for m. Or T. So, so then uh, this is to just we are, can factorize the momentum independent part. Similarly, uh, to the case for the uh, number density, so we have exponential and an integral P M of p square over 2m to the minus p square over 2mt. So similarly, you can uh, uh, make a change of variable. Uh, this exponential replaced by t square. And, and the sec this uh, the second term in the parentheses is also given by capital T times T scale. And similarly, you also divide by the MT, divide by divide P scale by two MT and scale root of two MT for uh, DP. <coughs> and then you also multiply uh, by two MT to the two third. So, uh, as a result, uh, and then uh, can test that this is the result, and then this integral is given by t scale times dt. So M over T scale, T scale. So, so this is the, uh, uh, nothing but the mass times uh, gamma function, one half times gamma of three half, the first term and the second term, is the temperature, and then we have a uh, 
one more power uh, with T square, P to the fourth in and, and uh, over. So T to the fourth, that means if you remember the gamma function, uh, in the definition of gamma function, we have this T to the two G minus one, that is the T to the fourth. So this is the uh, one half times gamma function uh, uh, five over two, okay? So that means it's the first term is the same as the number density. And the second term, is, as you can see, this uh, gamma over five over two is the uh, three over two times gamma over three over two. So uh, then uh, you can notice that uh, number density times M, and then you divide the second term by one half times gamma of three over two, and then you can, can get uh, three over two times temperature. So this is the energy density, okay? So energy density given by the number density times M plus three half T. So T, this can be also, uh, we can ignore the temperature. So the so number density, energy density just to uh, number, density, number density times rest mass. Just you can count number of particles and multiply by the rest of mass. That is the energy density. Okay, so the what about pressure? So pressure is also uh, given as a momentum integral. So the before uh, before the approximation. Uh, sorry, we don't have it. So, uh, okay, so this, the same integral can be written as people making a change of variables from momentum to energy. Uh, we have So P square divided by three E times phase space distribution. So please remember this uh, for our uh, approximation in the non relativistic twist case. So, so this is approximate, this is the before approximation. Let me write down again, if you remember correctly. This is the, uh, sorry, maybe I didn't, I should have, did I include, uh, where's, the, where's the pressure? Okay, the pressure, so there is no three, there is no three, because I have already uh, moved, uh, moved, moved three in front of the integral, so, so this is it, uh, and pressure, and then this uh, phase space distribution again, given by this, okay? So, and then, uh, and then this energy, this energy, we have energy, okay? Here is the energy, and the phases, and then also you can, Follow the similar step. The energy approximated to mass and the high order terms can be ignored. So, <clears throat> and this energy also approximated to. Uh, momentum rest mass plus kinetic energy. This one. So, uh, so this is approximation. And 
and minus mu e to the minus m minus mu over t and then e square over 2mt. So again, we are changing our variables. This, the exponent becomes t square, and we divide by 2mt square for p to the fourth, and this second term is the 2m over 2mt over 2m, the square root of 2mt, and then multiply by m. 2mt over 5 over 2, 5 over 2. So, so this integral becomes this one and 2mt to the 5 over 2. Uh, we have integral, which is independent of temperature. So t to the fourth times exponential and dt and this integral is nothing but the one half times gamma 5 over 2. Okay, so and <clears throat> so this is the uh, you can notice that this is the true and this is the three square root of pi over eight factor. So uh, okay, so this is the uh, okay. And then uh, so if you uh, okay, so so the, this is the pressure. So pressure is approximated to uh, G exponential and to M T. Pi over two, three times square root of pi over eight. So then we can we need one uh, simply simplification, and we are comparing this to the uh, energy density. So energy density is given by this expression rest mass, and on the other end pressure, uh, we have this. And the number density, okay, so let me record the number density. Uh, where's the number density? So number density is given by this, oops. So number density, oops. And, and it, uh, sorry. So number density here, okay. So number density given by that. So let me write down the number density. Uh, the non relativity limit okay so three two so combining these two uh you can show that the pressure is given by uh, actually. Uh, <clears throat> so if you, let's say, what do you want to say? Okay, so then the pressure, you can show the pressure is given by the over density time temperature. So there's one more power in T in, com in comparison to the number density. So, uh, so then uh, this is the much smaller than the 
energy density, which is uh, approximate to number density and mass for temperature being much smaller than the rest mass. So therefore, the pressure can be ignored. So essentially, we are using this uh, extreme limit when the mass is very large, the temperature can be small, the pressure is small, pressureless for matter, non-relativistic limit. So therefore, equation of state equal to zero. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the result of the relativistic and non-relativistic uh, cases, starting from the same uh, general formula. Okay, so the, what about uh, effect of the chemical potential? So chemical potential. So the chemical potential, if you add uh, bosonic particle, you uh, in, uh, I think the, let me remind you this. If you add uh, Fermi data, the, I mean, the spin one half particle into the system, you are increasing the chemical potential by one unit. Bose Einstein, you are decreasing the chemical potential by one unit. But uh, this is the convention, so there's no. Uh, use this convention chemical particle potential plus one for Bose Einstein, formula statistics, and chemical potential equal to minus one for Bose Einstein. So if you have many. Uh, the, if you have a uh, large chemical potential uh, from the beginning, that is the case uh, with the degenerate uh, formulas. In this case, the chemical potential is much greater than temperature, and the relativity automatically tells us uh, the chemical uh, the temperature is much larger than temperature. So, so energy density uh, can be written uh, in this form. For the for for Dirac, uh, for me, Dirac statistics, we have got this result. And essentially, this integral and in energy uh, for energy integral uh, for the infinite up to the infinite energy. But uh, because of this uh, uh, chemical potential, mu, the uh, phase space distribution is suppressed. If you, if energy is greater than the chemical potential, there's some, um, uh, there's uh, exponential uh, suppression. So in this case, E plus mu is greater than zero. Therefore, exponential e to the E minus mu over T is because the T is very small. It's in comparison to the chemical potential. So this is much larger than unity. So therefore, there's the exponential suppression uh, in the 
phase space dis distribution. So essentially, you are cutting off the integral up to chemical potential. And then if you limit yourself below, the, if you limit yourself the energy below the chemical potential, we can ignore the exponent so that we can get this simple form of integral. So this is nothing but g over eight pi scale times chemical potential mu to the force. So this is the energy density. So for instance, electron gas, electron gas, the relativistic fermions, this chemical potential is called the Fermi energy. You are filling up uh, we are filling up the energy level up to the Fermi energy. Beyond that, uh, phase space uh, uh, distribution is exponentially suppressed. So just we are filling up to the Fermi level and also number density given by this integral in energy So this is again approximated to uh, the integral between rest mass and the chemical potential. Uh, we have a one power uh, less in the integral. So uh, this is the thing about g over six pi square and chemical uh, mu cube. This is number density and the pressure also similarly given as the integral in energy. And the pressure term, uh, sorry, so what was the, uh, what was the form of the, so here we are ignoring the mass term, so. Uh, So already there are some approximation already. Uh, so this is the approximated to, uh, this is the same integral as for the uh, no, energy density. So one third, zero. so this is the um, also radiation, radiation state equal to one third because relativistic. The, therefore, the average energy equal to uh, so this is the thing about the average energy equal to uh, energy density. Uh, sorry, this is total. Uh, let me see. I think that this is energy for single particles. So, so energy density divided by number density uh, is given by uh, just the ratio of these two results, rho over n, which is the uh, three over four times the chemical potential. This is the average energy per particle. So on the other end, the uh, non-relativistic case, uh, energy, average energy per particle is given by uh, the same uh, formula, law over energy density. 
And if you go back to uh, the non-relativist case, and uh, so energy density is given by this expression and the pressure is given by uh, this expression nt. So if you remember this nt and this is n m over three over two t. Uh, so the other way. Uh, so nt, sorry, nt is not pressure, sorry. This is the n is the just n is m plus one plus three half times temperature. Okay, so the average the energy is stress mass, and this is the nothing but the kinetic energy for a single particle, uh, uh, according to the uh, equipartition theorem in statistical mechanics. <clears throat> so this is kinetic energy. The second piece is the kinetic energy. Think about the kinetic energy. Okay, so now uh, we have finished our discussion on the In the uh, thermodynamics, equilibrium thermodynamics until now. So, until now, equilibrium dynamics. So, the everything. I've seen, I mean, the quantities like uh, uh, energy density, pressure, number density, they are all depend on temperature, single parameter, and mass and the chemical potential. So in this case, uh, temperature and mass and chemical potential. So these three parameters up to now. So there is no uh, a, a pro a, a, uh, uh, there is no need of uh, information uh, for uh, for the interactions between uh, particles. So there is no need for interactions in this case. So just to uh, let me. I, th I think that the motivation for considering the equilibrium thermodynamics in the uh, cosmology is that the in cosmology the Hubble and the Friedman equation governed by the energy density present uh, in the universe. So energy density is the what we want to calculate. And here, in our case, m density uh, in general is a function of temperature and particle mass and the chemical potential. So for our discussion, we are ignoring the chemical potential and just to take the energy density as a function of temperature and particle mass. And if uh, in the non-relativistic case, Uh, is sorry only uh, relativistic species satisfying the temperature much greater than particle mass. That you in principle you could have a number of particles with the different masses for each species. We denote the particle mass for each species by. Uh, mi, then the temperature is much uh, larger than the particle mass, then those guys will contribute to the radiation energy density. So radiation energy density, this limit given by uh, these expressions, the, the, all the uh, non-relativistic species contribute to the energy density with this uh, 
tilt the force power with a certain uh, effective uh, degrees of freedom. And the pressure is equal to one third the energy density. And uh, what about this G star? The G star is given by, of course, also uh, actually uh, you can also assign uh, temperature for each particle. So here, this temperature that uh, the kind of common temperature is the photon temperature normally. But uh, it doesn't have to be photon temperature. If some particles are decoupled from photon, and then just uh, those particles could be separately in thermal equilibrium, or it could have effective temperature um, in such a way that the phase space distribution for the equilibrium state could be maintained, even if those particles do not interact. Uh, efficiently anymore. <laughs> so in principle, we could have a temperature for uh, each particle. If the these relativistic species are in thermal equilibrium separately uh, on their own. So then in that case, uh, individual, uh, of course, this this the normalization kind of uh, radiation energy density normalized to photon temperature, but uh, in general, you need to take some of the relative the energy density for the relativistic species with the own temperatures, and then uh, okay. So when I equal to and uh, if it's the boson, then we have bosonic degree of freedom, GI times the, the temperature for these bosons and plus if uh, this particle, if this relativistic species is fermion, you need to multiply by seven over eight for the energy density. So we have got this one. And if you we multiply this uh, energy density by the photon temperature, then Ti over T to the force seven over eight. Ti over T to the force and T4. So from there, you can read out the coefficient of T to the force as T star. So this T star tells you that uh, how many degrees of freedom are relativity uh, species. So effectively, massless degrees of freedom with the particle mass smaller than the temperature. Okay. So then you can uh, actually, depending on particle masses in comparison to the photon temperature, you can count the effectively massless degree of freedom. So just to just to please remember that this is the uh, the energy density is given by this expression, and then just from the Friedman equation, just from the Friedman equation, H is equal to rho over three times Planck mass. And the role we are replacing by the radiation energy density. So that is the uh, pi scale over star t and g star t to the fourth. So therefore, 
90, y square over 90. Uh, we can t to the first over m Planck. Okay. Because this is the radiation, so in this case, radiation dominant, radiation domination. Because of that, the uh, scale factor is proportional to the square root of temp, uh, square root of square root of t. Therefore, the Hubble parameter given by a dot over a is given by one over two t. So therefore, the Friedman equation from the Friedman equation, we can relate uh, temp, uh, time, the cosmic time to temperature. So H is scale equal to one over four T square, which is given by this expression. Therefore, the cosmic time, uh, cosmic time uh, equal to a uh, okay so so if you So we can get this uh, mm, take the inverse of it. So okay. So we have this result, and therefore the cosmic cosmic time is. Uh, proportional inversely to temperature square. So as temperature as uh, the cosmic time increases, as the universe gets older, the temperature drops by this power. Therefore, you can relate between temperature and cosmic time in this way. So. <clears throat> so just to, uh, you can uh, remember the whole parameter in this uh, simple uh, numerical value given by this whole parameter during radiation domination. Uh, we have this in the Planck mass given here is the reduced Planck scale. Yes. And the temperature and the relation between uh, uh, cosmic time and temperature also written uh, in this simple form. And Planck divided by T cube this square and this is locally if the temperature is one and maybe then cosmic time is only one second of course here uh, in order to determine the relation between cosmic time and temperature we need to know what is the uh, effectively mass listing your freedoms are. Uh, so just uh, so as I said, uh, if the all the uh, relativity species are common in temperature equal to the radiation temperature, then just uh, is just given by boson sum of the bosonic degree of freedom 
some of the form you need uh, theory of freedom uh, in this expression. Just we only have to sum over the uh, number of uh, degrees of freedom for bosons and and fermions. So if the temperature is high enough, uh, you can calculate this G star. Let's see what's the G star. So when the temperature, the, there will be the exercise if temperature much smaller than the mega electron volt, then the effective Effectively, at least degree of freedom is given by. Uh, actually, this there is a non-trivial uh, aspect because the neutrino. So instead of uh, talking about low temperature, let me uh, tell you about high temperature between uh, mega electron volt and uh, hundred mega electron volt. Then just uh, is given by. This number 10.75. If the temperature is greater than 300 GeV, in between, actually, in between 100 MeV and 300 GeV, the effective uh, massless degree of freedom will change. G star changes between the, this G star equal to 10.75, and now. Uh, High, at high temperature, uh, this is the standard model. Uh, all the standard model particles are relativity, relativistic. All the standard model particles are uh, relativistic in this in this case. In the first case. Uh, not all the standard model particles, but only three neutrinos uh, plus photon plus electron, positron only. So because the uh, electron mass, this is the uh, only massive particles in this list, and those particle masses is about 0 0.5 mega electron volt. So about MeV scale. So when the temperature uh, is above the electron mass, but below muon mass, then we need to include three neutrinos and photon, electron positron as relativist particles. So this is what you get, you can get. So this is just the illustration. And if the temperature is sufficiently large, and then there's a square root two of G star dependence in this relation, so it doesn't change much uh, the relation between temperature and the cosmic time. Okay, so let me uh, stop here. And uh, the, for the next week, we are going to continue to discuss uh, non equilibrium, out of equilibrium thermodynamics. So next week. Aerobic dynamics and Ryobir. In order to do that, we are going to discuss Ryobir equation uh, in time in the time dependent background, so L5W universe. And also, we derive the uh, Boltzmann equation to determine for dark matter uh, abundance. Okay, those, those are very important topic uh, for dark matter at the cosmological scales. Okay, uh, then let me stop here.